Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is your sister Amina Sanchez. Uh, I just want to apologize. I haven't posted a YouTube video in a very long time. Um, you know how it is. Life, school, work. It gets caught up to you. Basically, a lot of has changed since I last posted a video. As you can tell, I'm wearing the face veil or otherwise known as niqab. Uh, I also got married. Uh, I went to Africa for two months and a whole bunch of stuff. Inshallah, I'll make a video about those. But for now, uh, I want to. I made this tag video. I don't know if it exists. If it exists, let me know. But um, it's a hijab or niqab tag, basically. If you guys ever heard of tag videos on like YouTube or whatever video posting websites. They're just questions that people basically answer, and it's like a tag of like, oh, what's your favorites tag, and one, two, three tag if it's like a couple or whatever. But anyways, I made this, these questions <clears throat> that uh, are going to answer about both hijab and niqab because I basically haven't been wearing niqab for very long. Hijab a little bit long, but... Yeah, it's always fun to just hear, even if you've been a hijabi for life, it's always just fun to hear about other other girls' stories and uh, learn from it. And it can inspire you to keep wearing hijab, to inspire other people to wear hijab. <clears throat> if you don't know what hijab is, it's basically, um, in Arabic it means to cover. Most people would refer it to as the scarf that I'm wearing that covers my hair. But we kind of interpret it as like every, covering everything from like my head and like not including my face. Basically everything but the face and hands. There's like six <clears throat> conditions that it's not that it's not tight. It has to be loose. Can't be see through. Um, can't be flashy. <clears throat> can't be really brightly colored. Basically just covering modesty. Um, parts of your body don't show it. We can't really see what shape you are, what you look like. Sometimes we can't really tell <clears throat> your skin tone. Well, I mean, if you covered, if you did, if you were covered head to toe, and you only saw your eyes, maybe you wouldn't be able to tell. So, anyways, it's just um, Muslim women wear it for modesty. It's a commandment from God or Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And it's just to protect us from the eyes of men. It's not just for men, too. Like, I don't... Personally, when a lot of people have been asking when I started wearing the gob, like, oh, you're married, so that's why you started wearing it. And while I did get married, that's not the reason why. Hijab, niqab, covering isn't just to protect ourselves from men. It's also because we strongly believe in our religion we believe that we should be looked at for our brains and our personalities and not just what we look like, inshallah. So, yeah, that's like a little short thing if you don't know what hijab is. Niqab is just the face veil to cover my face, and so only my eyes are showing, and yeah, it kind of bothers me sometimes. Anyways, <clears throat> let's get started. So... Okay. All praise is due to Allah. We praise him and we seek his for help and forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from our soul's evils and our wrongdoings. He whom, whom Allah guides, no one can misguide. And he whom he misguides, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah, alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is his servant and messenger. O oh Allah, send prayers upon Muhammad and the followers of Muhammad, just as you sent prayers upon Ibrahim and upon the followers of Ibrahim. Verily, you are full of praise and majesty. O oh Allah, send blessings upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, just as you sent blessings upon Ibrahim and upon the family of Ibrahim. You are full of praise and majesty. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so the first question is, how long have you been wearing hijab, and have I ever taken it off? So, I haven't been wearing hijab for very long. If you knew me when I went to high school, I fluctuated wearing it a lot. One year I'd wear it, one year I'd take it off. And 
basically it was just due to the fact that I didn't have a lot of support. Uh, my parents told me to wear it, even though they weren't very religious. And, uh, yeah, I just didn't feel very comfortable wearing it. There weren't, there were probably like two, three Muslims out of like the whole entire school. I had people, you know, just not understand it. And I barely understood it myself. So barely, I didn't know why I was wearing it. So it felt wrong and I felt different. So I always fluctuated wearing it. So I did not start wearing it completely till I graduated high school. And I moved myself into an environment where there are a lot more support, a lot of hijabis to help me and support me. And I didn't feel so different and like a geek and stuff. So, yes, I have been wearing hijab probably since 2012, so that's only about two, three years. <laughs> Hasn't been very long, but alhamdulillah. And my second question is, I'll, I will put all the questions down below if you ever want to make your own tag or the, this tag I'm doing. So the second question is, have you ever been bullied or made fun of for wearing it? <clears throat> so... Yes, that's the partly the reason why I took, kept taking it off. I did start wearing it when I was in middle school. So basically, like I said, I was kind of the only person wearing hijab, at least in middle school. There were more people in high school, but only like two, three others. So they would just kind of be like, oh, you're bald underneath that. You're, you have cancer. Like, take that towel off your head. Take that sheet off your head. Like, I remember those times so vividly and it was just hard fighting back and I would say no it's called hijab it's not a towel or a sheet and they'd be like a hijab like they would just they want to understand how to pronounce it you know how kids how cruel kids can be so yeah it was kind of frustrating always being made fun of part of the reason why I would just take it off is because I didn't feel comfortable I felt way too different and I felt a lot very misunderstood basically Okay, the third question, what does hijab represent to you? And I think this is a good, really good question. So hijab, like I said, number one, I wear it for because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to in the Quran. Number two, I wear it, you know, just just because it feels more modest. And when I say modest, I'm not saying that someone who doesn't cover their hair or dress modestly it doesn't mean that they're not, you know, a good person or they don't have a good personality. I'm just saying that for me personally, my own <clears throat> personal view and opinion, I used to wear shorts. I used to wear like short shorts and like tight shirts that you could see through and stuff like that. And I noticed that, you know, boys, men, they wouldn't be looking at, they would just look at me and part, part, of, part of me knew knew that they were looking, and part of me liked that. And, you know, I mean, I think every girl goes through that stage where it's like we want to be noticed, we want to feel attractive, so we start wearing clothes, we start wearing makeup, we start dressing for other people, not for ourselves. And so I didn't really feel comfortable wearing those clothes. I felt a little bit more attractive, but I wasn't necessarily getting the right kind of attention. So... Yes, I feel a lot more modest wearing hijab. And when I say hijab, not just the headscarf, like the abaya, like the whole ensemble. So you basically can't really see what I, what my sides or my shape or like shape of my legs or what I look like. So I feel a lot, very comfortable. I feel beautiful. I mean, hijab to me represents beauty. If you believe beauty means, you know, wearing shorts, wearing crop tops, wearing bikinis, that's, that's your own personal opinion. That's I have nothing to do with that. I'm not judging you for finding that beautiful. This is just what I find beautiful. All right, so the next question is, <clears throat> did I decide on my own to wear hijab or niqab, or did I grow up wearing it? And when, when I mean grow up wearing it, I mean, did you wear, like, you see, you know how you see little girls, like, wearing the tiny little hijabs, like, uh, I think that's a good method as long as you explain to the child, like, the purpose of hijab. Otherwise, she's just going to feel like it's just a cloth and I'm wearing it all my whole life and not really understand the true purpose. So, no, as I said, my parents weren't very religious. 
I wasn't introduced. I was introduced to Islam at a very late age, probably like 10 or 11. And uh, yeah, so I was wearing hijab around that age, but I kept taking it off because it didn't feel right to me at the time. And yeah, so you could say I haven't been Muslim my whole life, but I feel like I have. Even though I wasn't practicing, you know, my, the entirety of my life and grew up in a com full, complete Muslim family, I feel like I have been Muslim all my life, even though I haven't been a hijabi all my life. So I did decide on my own to wear hijab. Um, but for a while, my mom wanted me to. She kind of forced me to. But as I grew older, she was just like, I'm not going to force you. So I decided on my own to wear hijab. And even my mom doesn't wear hijab. Like um, a lot of my family members don't. It's just like my grandma and then like my great grandma. But um, yeah, inshallah, maybe other family members will be inspired by me. So next question is, <clears throat> what are some common misunderstandings about hijab or niqab? So common misunderstandings are probably the oppression thing. Um, they, a lot of Western media and social media will portray, or even like feminist groups, they sort of feel like the need to liberate us. But I feel liberated. <laughs> hijab liberates me. You know, it liberates me in the way that people have to get to know me and they don't just see me as like a physical object. They don't see me as an object. Like I'm not just this body. I'm not just my chest or my butt or my thighs. Like I'm a person like get to know me by talking to me, not by looking at what I look like, you know. So even by wearing the cab, like people are forced to, to talk to me. Like that's what I have noticed by wearing the cab. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, you're going to. <clears throat> it's going to be difficult. People are going to be afraid of you. People are going to think you're a terrorist. I have not, alhamdulillah, even though I'm in, I'm, I live in America, I have not experienced that yet. Every person that has approached me about wearing the face veil, they've been very respectful. It's been like a dawah opportunity, so I really love it. <clears throat> and, yeah, if you ever misunderstand, you know, a girl covering her face, covering her body, just please talk to someone about it. You know, if you're going to re do research, make sure it's the right kind of research. It's better to talk to someone rather than, you know, relying on, <clears throat> you know, sources that may not be the best. They could be biased or they could be trying to make us look bad. So a lot of misunderstandings that I'm impressed or forced by husband or my family's making me wear what I have to wear. When in reality, no one, no one forced me. Like my mom, like literally does not even like me wearing like really long hijabs and stuff so yeah it's my own choice and I it's a choice that I would make all over again if I had to alhamdulillah so next question is what are some funny stories you've experienced while wearing hijab or even niqab funny stories about wearing hijab I haven't had any well I don't know like some people just sort of assume that um, <clears throat> that I'm a foreigner, or that I don't know English, or, I don't know, people are just really funny, <laughs> I mean, a majority of the Muslim population did immigrate here, a majority of them are from a foreign country, but, um, yeah, I'm American, uh, my family is from outside of this country, my mother did, uh, was born in Ethiopia, and my father's mom was born in El Salvador, so, yeah, I do have a little interesting mix, but, uh, yeah, a lot of people just assume my name is, my name even, it's American sounding, it's Samantha, like, I like to get called Amina, but, yeah, a lot of people just assume that I'm, like, a foreigner, that I don't know English, or because I'm half Hispanic, I can't be Muslim, like, I had someone when I, I used to work retail, and uh, somebody, a lot, I always get questions about my ethnicity, and it's sort of exhausting always explaining it. But anyways, so I told him I was half Hispanic. And he's like, oh, so you're not Muslim. And I said, well, wait, what does my ethnicity have anything to do with my religion? And I was like, I was kind of upset, like offended by that. So basically I was like, well, 
me being Muslim, it has, it has nothing to do with where I come from. It has everything to do with my heart, what I believe in, that I believe in God and uh, don't associate partners to him, that I, you know, follow the five p- pillars. I may not be perfect about everything about that, but I believe in my heart. I believe in Islam, and it has nothing to do with my background. Shouldn't matter where I come from. Shouldn't matter if I'm American. Yeah, that's basically it. So next question is, do I have any advice or tips for those struggling wearing hijab or maybe even contemplating about becoming um, a hijabi? Anyways, uh, let's see. Don't be afraid. Don't, even if you are in an environment like I was where there are no hijabis, there's no Muslims, you may be the only person in the whole school or maybe in the whole town wearing hijab. You may have just converted to Islam and your family doesn't understand the concept of hijab or even like that you want to be Muslim. And I just say, be you, you know, like at the end of the day, there are going to be people that don't support you, even if it's people you love, like your spouse, you know, your friends, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, (coughs) your parents. They, they're going to find some fault and some choices that you want to make. They're going to want different things for you that you want. Like, for instance, <clears throat> a lot of foreign parents want their children to be doctors just because of the fact that it's a high-paying career and you help people. But what I say is there's more than one way to help people. There's more than a, just a doctor as a career where you can make a sufficient living. Don't force others to do what you want to do. You, look at things from a different point of view Uh, we all have different personalities viewpoints let's try and understand each other so if you are struggling wearing it talk to people about it research about it watch the lectures try to see try to wear it before you um, commit full time like you don't have to just randomly wear it and then stop start wearing it like you know 24 7 maybe just practice like try to see how to wear it and which way best fits you. So you are beautiful, even if you're not wearing hijab. So if you are trying to wear it and you're struggling, that's a jihad. That's something, struggle, a jihad is just a struggle in the cause of Allah. It's not necessarily fighting or battling. So if you're fighting to do this for the sake of Allah, it will happen for you, inshallah, and you will get reward for it. And I am happy you, you if you are trying to make that choice. Good job. <laughs> Anyways, last question is, how do I feel about niqab? And would I ever consider becoming a niqabi? I am a niqabi. Yay. But uh, no, those questions are meant not just for me, anyone who wants to answer them. I'd love to see if anyone else would make this tag. It would be really cool. And uh, yeah, I just love hearing um, other people's stories about their hijab or wearing niqab because... Like I said, even if you've been wearing it for a long time and you understand the reasoning behind it, it's always good to get like a refresher and, you know, support other people in their journey. So how do I feel about niqab? I think, again, it's something that represents beauty, modesty, not saying that if you don't wear it, you're not beautiful. I personally feel beautiful and comfortable wearing it. I don't feel people... Bother, men at least bothering me all the time because even as a hijabi I did have men approach me so if they are approaching me now it's not for the same reasons usually so yeah I don't see it as wajib though I have done my research if you want to argue with me about it that's cool <laughs> I've done research and you know it's not specifically said in the Quran you have to cover your face if it does say that, it's always in parentheses, which means that's the interpretation of whoever is interpreting it. So I don't see it as wajib but something that you have to do or that you're going to get punished for if you aren't wearing it at this moment. I just see it as a like extra credit, like a greater reward than just hijab for doing it in the sake of Allah. And at the end of the day, it's like I said, like, <clears throat> well, I haven't said this, but... <laughs> Just by me wearing um, hijab or niqab doesn't make me better than you. It doesn't mean that I don't have faults. doesn't mean that I don't sin. So please don't think that (coughs) if I ever see you and you um, are a Muslim and you don't wear hijab or niqab, I'm going to judge you because you don't wear it. This is just a personal choice for me. 
I support people who are choosing to do this choice as well. And I also would hope that you one day get to this point if you are a Muslim or even if you're non-Muslim. Modesty, it's a great thing, you know. I feel a lot more comfortable. I don't feel the need to dress for others. I'm dressing for myself. I feel comfortable in, you know, looser clothing, clothing that doesn't show me. I can be me and not have to have people stare at me necessarily. (laughs) I mean, people stare at me now anyways, but yes, like, like I, um, yeah, (laughs) I'm starting to get choked up. It's really hot in my room. (laughs) Anyways, um, I'm not better than anyone else just by covering my face or covering my hair, covering my body. I like to respect other people and understand other people's viewpoints. So don't be afraid to talk to me about it. If you want to know more, don't be afraid to approach me if you ever see me or if you ever see any other um, woman covered. I hope she would be just as um, kind about you asking her questions. So yes, I guess that ends this tag. Hopefully I'm able to figure out how to put this on YouTube. <laughs> and thank you for watching. Uh, shall I try and make more videos? Hopefully not as long as this one. I told myself it wasn't going to be long, but yeah. Um, also, please make dua for all the our brothers and sisters suffering in Syria and Afghanistan, and Ethiopia, in the, uh, Ethiopia, Somalia, just all over the country. There's a lot of corruption going on in the moment. So just keep all our brothers and sisters in your dua. Speak out about all the stuff that's going on. And yes. Let's pray for ourselves. Let's strive in the cause of Allah. Let's continue to ask for forgiveness and be the best we can be. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye-bye.